Hi guys, my name is Ollie. welcome back to the channel. I'm a junior doctor based in the UK. Now I get questions from time to time and most recently uh, this was the subject of a little spat in one of the comment sections on my graduation video. Basically, how does the title doctor actually work in the UK? Who can actually legally call themselves a doctor? Can I? Can you? At what point in medical training do you actually become a doctor? What about dentists and vets who sometimes also use the title? What about chiropractors, podiatrists, naturopaths, nurse practitioners with doctorates, pharmacists with doctorates? And ultimately, is it illegal to call yourself a doctor when you're not one? How do all of these things fit together? And perhaps most importantly, what does it mean for you as a patient? But before we jump into the video guys, standard reminder to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and enable notifications so you make sure that you don't miss any future videos. So let's just jump into things with the proviso that this video is going to focus solely on UK law. They will probably not be the same in America, in Canada, in Australia, in the EU. And obviously it should go without saying that this video does not constitute either medical advice or legal advice if you are seeking seeking either proper medical advice or proper legal advice, then you should speak to someone with suitable qualifications. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So let's start simple with who normally calls themselves a doctor, or what do most people think of when they think of the word doctor? Well the most basic answer to this is anyone who holds a doctorate or a doctoral level degree can call themselves doctor. This is the highest level of academic qualification that it's possible to receive in most countries around the world, and because it is a doctoral degree, it confers with it the title doctor. The most common example that most people are familiar with is a PhD, a doctor of philosophy in almost any subject you can think of, although there are many other examples, including doctor of medicine or MD, or Doctor of Pharmacy, PharmD, or even Juris Doctor, JD, for legal scholars and so on. A PhD represents several years of original research and the PhD candidate is expected to be producing knowledge that is new to the field in some way, and then ultimately has to defend their work in what's called a viva, a very rigorous interview about everything that they've done. And assuming that all of that goes well, the doctorate is then awarded and conferred upon them. So that's a PhD or a doctoral degree. These are the proper doctors, if you like, the people who are under any circumstances allowed to call themselves doctor. But there's a reason why I'm dressed like this and I'm wearing a stethoscope. What about medical doctors? And this is confusing because we have the noun doctor, which means physician or a medical practitioner, which sounds the same, as the title doctor. But most people understand that if we feel unwell, say we feel a bit sick and it goes on for longer than we feel comfortable with, then we would go and see our doctor or a physician. Usually this is going to be a general practitioner or a GP who would introduce themselves when you go and see them as say, hello, I'm Dr. Smith. I'm the GP today. So how does this actually come about? Do all physicians have PhDs? Well, as you may have suspected, no, although doctors are very well qualified and very well trained. Well, the answer here is that within the UK, there are certain degrees that when they are awarded, confer with them the honorary title doctor, despite them not being doctoral level qualifications like the PhD. The most common examples that you'll see include medical degrees, dental degrees, and veterinary degrees, all of which confer the honorary title doctor, despite them all being undergraduate degrees, that is the first degree, the lowest level of achievement that someone might achieve while at university. But obviously under normal circumstances, such as when you go and see your GP, the reason that that doctor will use the title doctor, you know, good morning, my name is Dr. Smith, is that it makes it clear to you as a patient that you are being seen by a physician, someone who likely has the ultimate decision-making power and is responsible for your care. And that does a few really important things. It sets the professional context of the conversation that's going to happen. It sets up the reasonable expectations that a patient can have of their doctor. It makes the patient clear that they are in a safe and trustworthy environment, that they should be honest with the doctor so they can provide them the best care possible. 
And like I say, it makes it clear specifically who that patient is talking to. So in their own head, they have an understanding of the stage that they are at with their care. And likewise, if you went to see a dentist or a vet, for example, it would be perfectly reasonable for them to use the title if they wish, although in practice, this is less common. Now there is an obvious exception which you may have come across before and I've discussed this in another video so I'd recommend going and checking that out if you find it interesting. But surgeons, even though they are medically trained physicians just like any other who have specialised in surgery, tend to use Mr or Miss or Mrs as their honorific for historical reasons, but like I say, I've discussed this before in another video. So thinking about the law for a second, who can actually legally use the title doctor? Well the answer, surprisingly to some people, is basically anyone can. The title doctor is not protected in any way under UK law, and there is literally nothing stopping you, or your neighbour, or anyone else using the title. It's not that black and white however, there is some legislation in place which has something to say about this. I'm going to have to read it for you here, but the legislation on this comes from the Medical Act 1983 which states that a person who willfully and falsely presents to be or takes or uses the name or title of physician, doctor of medicine, licentiate in medicine and surgery, bachelor of medicine, surgeon, general practitioner or apothecary, or any name, title, addition or description implying that he is registered under any provision of this act or that he is recognised by law as a physician or surgeon or licentiate in medicine and surgery or a practitioner in medicine or an apothecary shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding level 5 on the standard scale. So what does this actually mean in the context of this video when we're thinking about the title doctor? What the act kind of spells out, or you can see is clearly the thrust of what the wording is trying to get at, is that it is illegal to impersonate a doctor or to pretend to be one, or indeed to imply that you are trained and registered in medicine when you are not. Now obviously using the title doctor in some contexts may imply that you are medically trained, however I would argue that simply using the title outside of a medical context in your day-to-day -day life if you introduce yourself as Dr. Burton or Dr. Smith or whatever, that's still a few steps away from actually impersonating a physician because as we've discussed there are many reasons why someone might have the title doctor. Which brings us on to the next part of this video and the part that I find as a rationalist, as a humanist, as a scientist and I guess now as a doctor, the bit that I find a little bit more grating and a bit more irritating. So we know that for better or worse the general public tends to hold doctors in very high esteem. Now I realise that public attitudes shift and change over time, but generally speaking, in society doctors are held in a respected position, they are trusted by most members of the public, and the public sees doctors, quite reasonably I would suppose, as experts and wise when it comes to medicine and healthcare. They are the people that you should trust with the management of your health especially when they are senior, you know, they've been the village GP for 10 years or they're a hospital consultant, when they've got some degree of seniority, the buck stops with them. Those are the people that you should see if you have a serious problem. I'm going to make a potentially bold statement, but I'm going to go there and put it out. There is no other profession on earth beyond the physician that has the same degree of medical understanding and understanding of medical science, and I think this is generally appreciated. The training is extremely long by virtually all professional standards and extremely difficult, but the reason that those standards are so high is that by the time that doctor finishes training and becomes an independent consultant or practitioner, they are an expert in what they do. However, there are unfortunately many people who for various reasons would seek to exploit the trust that the public places in the medical profession. So this might actually be medical doctors that have a book or a product or something that they are trying to sell to people, or it might be someone who isn't medically qualified, deliberately misleading their audience or members of the public, essentially trying to trick them into thinking they are medically qualified and a doctor, again, in order to maybe sell something, or simply be regarded as intelligent and an expert. And indeed, another quote for you, the GMC's verdict on this has stated that in the majority of these cases, the complaint related to people holding PhDs or calling themselves doctor in cases when they shouldn't 
was for the purposes of establishing credibility. It is trying to appear authoritative and knowledgeable when these people don't actually have the qualification or the training in order to be credible. So where does this actually leave us? Well, the example that I tend to jump to is chiropractors because most people are roughly familiar with what they do. Chiropractors in the UK can use the title doctor and often do. Practice of chiropractic, that is manipulating bones and muscles in all these weird and wonderful ways is not an evidence-based system of practice. We need to be really clear about that. However, I will put my hands up obviously and say that many patients, including many people I know, visit chiropractors semi-regularly and feel that they find those visits useful. That's fine. If you've got money and that's where you want to spend your money, fine by me, I don't care. However, we need to be really clear about the fact that a chiropractor despite the fact that they can use the title doctor, should never be representing themselves as a qualified medical practitioner. They should never give any medical advice of any description whatsoever. And crucially, and this is the real rub, should make it very clear that they are a doctor of chiropractic and not a doctor of medicine or indeed a surgeon. And because most chiropractic is done privately, this is obviously an instance in which appearing credible and knowledgeable to your customer base, which is what patients are in this instance, is going to be very important for your brand. So if you can leave all of your branding and your titling deliberately ambiguous and patients think that they're being seen by a medical doctor, that confers upon you a level of respect and authoritative wisdom that you do not actually have in terms of the expectations that that patient has. And the regulatory body for chiropractors in the UK actually on their website makes this extremely clear. Chiropractors should never, for the purposes of branding, simply give their title as Dr. Smith. They should say Dr. Smith brackets doctor of chiropractic, not doctor of medicine. And you unfortunately see this sort of deliberate misrepresentation going on all the time, especially on social media. Among groups like naturopathic doctors, Ayurvedic and spiritual medicine practitioners and so on. And just as a word of advice, I think it should go without saying that if someone introduces themselves as doctor so-and-so and then starts trying to give you health advice, you should immediately stop the conversation and say, are you a medical doctor? Do you have a medical qualification? And if so, what is your GMC number? I want to look you up on the register. There is a public register of doctors that is maintained by the GMC so that any patient can look up their doctor and see whether they are properly qualified and make a complaint if they need to. And this is done to protect the public from doctors who might be bad actors. And the same goes for nurses. You can look up someone's nursing pin number and see that they are registered and in good standing with the NMC. And similar principles apply even for other healthcare professionals who might hold doctorates, as many do. It's perfectly conceivable that you might one day see a pharmacist, a nurse, a physician associate, somebody like that, who holds a PhD and under normal circumstances would be perfectly allowed to call themselves doctor. Even then, if they're seeing someone as part of a patient consultation or in a healthcare setting, the guidance states that they should refrain from using the title doctor because of the possibility of the patient misunderstanding them and thinking that they are a physician when they are not in this case. And that actually applies in virtually all settings in healthcare. If we are consulting a patient for any reason, we should identify ourselves, what our role is, why we are there to see them that day. And basically this video comes because I find myself extremely concerned coming back to social media, places like Instagram and TikTok are rife with this by people either pretending to be doctors when they hold no medical qualification or having branding that is deliberately misleading in some way. So this might be a medical student, for example, using the hashtag future doctor whatever or doctor whatever their surname is, even though they are not medically qualified. And I understand from a branding perspective, I get why you would want to do that, especially if you're trying to get into the influencer space. However, I would then argue that if you're not making it clear in literally every single thing you do and post online that even though my handle says Dr. So-and-so, I am just a student, I am not medically qualified, then 
you don't have much of a leg to stand on if anyone accuses you of being misleading or indeed it gets sent to the GMC. It's a silly thing to do before you're medically qualified. And the worst part of all is that when I do see this, it usually appears alongside some sort of health advice that is either misleading at best or dangerous at worst. And personally, this is a plea, I think as a group we need to be a lot more proactive than we currently are, and I'm guilty of this myself, about actually reporting these people to either their institutions, their regulatory bodies, or just getting in touch and saying, look, what you're doing is inappropriate, stop it. If you keep doing it, I will report you. Because it's not about us at that stage, it's not about creators, it's not about influencers, it's about keeping people and patients safe. And lastly, as a final point to touch on, medical doctors are absolutely not exempt from bad practice either. Just because now say I have a medical degree and I can put doctor before my name if I want to, it doesn't mean that I'm suddenly an expert in nutrition, sleep, mental health and so on, which is a weird line that I see tons and tons of doctors doing. And interestingly, it's always in these areas where you actually get little to no training in medical school. But again, these lines are deliberately blurred where it's sort of like, oh, this person is a doctor. Clearly they must know a lot about nutrition and mental well-being. No, we get virtually no training on that throughout medical school. So when we are putting stuff online, guys, as a heartfelt plea, let's just keep it real. But thank you so much, guys. But thank you so much guys, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to go and check out my website ollieburn.com where you can find my blog through medical school and shortly my life as a junior doctor as well as all my previous videos and articles. Take care and I'll see you next time.